So you want to turbocharge your Honda series engine, whether that's an H series engine, a B series engine, a D series engine, these five tips that I'm about to give you will work universally across all those platforms. I would just like to share with you some of my life experience. I had never ridden in a four to 500 horsepower front wheel drive car. If I had, I would have realized that would have been plenty enough power to have all the fun that I would have ever wanted. Plus, it gets way more astronomically expensive once you go above that 500 horsepower mark. By the way, my name is Brad, and if you're new to the channel, I'm excited for your interest. Let's go ahead, get into these five tips that I wish I knew back when I started my build. First of all, if you've never experienced nitrous, yes, nitrous, just hear me out. And you have a, a simple build, a, a stock engine, you might want to consider doing that first. Uh, you can go and get a 600 horsepower Zex kit that can go on your car and be a ton of fun. You don't need to get a tunable ECU. Uh, you don't have to spend a thousand dollars to get uh, a tunable ECU like a Honda at S300. Uh, you can literally go to summitracing.com and spend 600 bucks. It, it has a, a smart box that ties into the fuel pressure regulator and uh, it automatically compensates. It raises the fuel pressure uh, when you hit the nitrous and it automatically does it for you. They're really safe if you set them up correctly. That was the first thing I did. And $600 for 55 horsepower, 75 horsepower, 100 horsepower is the best performance you are ever going to get dollar for dollar. And it would probably be some of the most fun you might ever have uh, for the least amount of money so consider that you know so how i would build my new engine if i could go back in time in the best of worlds i would buy an h22 a1 now if you have the h22 a4 or a b18 with an open deck design that's okay you're just gonna have to do one more step if i had the h22 a4 like i have in my fifth gen prelude or a b18 what would I do? I would fill or grout the block. What does that mean? Well, that means that literally I take an epoxy and I fill the top half of the block. So there's a lot of different videos out there about this, but I'm going to simplify it for you just real quick. So basically you pour sugar into the bottom half of the water jackets and you take your epoxy and you fill it up to the you fill up the top half of your water jackets you let it cure you take your head gasket and you drill holes where the water jacket openings are and it's that simple now you've got a cheap effective block guard or if you wanted to you could go ahead and get the block css that costs somewhere around $500 to $700. Me personally, if I was going to do that, I would just go the distance and get the block sleeved. Let's stay on the budget minded stuff. So now we've supported the sleeves. Now we're good. If you had the H22A1, you didn't have to do that. Now what are we going to do about the stock pistons? Because the stock pistons can only handle so much power. Now, if you're only going for like 350 horsepower, sub 400, you're pushing your luck, you could still use the, the stock piston, but you have to add ring gap. You would have to take it apart, file the rings down some so that the gap is a little wider. Give it like an extra two to four thousandths of an inch so that the ring lands don't touch, so that the rings don't touch when it gets hot. They're not designed for extra power. And that would give you a little bit of insurance. 
But what I would rather see you do is go and purchase yourself a set of Nippon Pistons. So they are for the Type S Prelude. So it's the same manufacturer that made the stock pistons, but they're a lot better and they're coated. They're a lot stronger. There's guys out there making 500 to 550 horsepower on these things. Um, they are, I believe they're 11 to one compression. They come with skirt coatings on them already. $220, $220. It is a cast piston, so you cannot make a world of power on these things now if your buddies are teasing you and they're saying to the moon don't listen to them because you still have a cast piston but they've been proven at the 500 horsepower level so that's why i'm saying 450 to be safe then you would go out and buy yourself a reasonably cheap forged rod like an eagle rod or a max speeding rod. The max speeding rods are only $289 and they're rated for like 800 horsepower. This is way overkill for what you need, but you can sleep well at night knowing that you won't ever have a window in your engine. So now you've got less than $500 in a rod and piston combo that is going to handle 450 horsepower easily and if you wanted to go and get extra protection for that you could go and have that cryo treated that's what i would do and then get yourself some valve springs and some retainers um, if you don't plan on revving the motor really high you could just get valve springs i suggest doing the titanium retainers but you don't have to and then and then lap the valves. You don't need to get an expensive valve job. I mean, valve jobs can be $800, $900 to do all that stuff to set up the head. All you have to do is if you're using Honda stock valves, uh, they're they are great the way they are. They're really strong. Um, you just go ahead and you lap the valve. It's really easy to do. You just use a compound that just basically trues the surface that these butt up against. Um, I would also shim the oil pump. That's really cheap to do. You just shim the oil pump. I will put up a picture of where I'm talking about and where to shim it. So on the, <clears throat> on the nut that screws in to the oil pump, you just basically get a washer and you want it to be about 25 thou to 30 thou thick. And you make that washer sit on top of there so it compresses that spring a little more. That'll give you like five more PSI of oil pressure. If you wanted to, you could buy a new spring for the oil pump. Uh, that's probably what I would do myself. And then I would shim it on top of that. Stock cams, just fine. Leave the balance shafts, just fine. <laughs> I mean, so you have to get injectors you'll need a set of injectors you can get like a thousand cc injector get yourself a cast manifold for a hundred bucks go out and get yourself a proven ebay turbo no problem no problem now for my money which engine would i invest in it'd have to be the b series specifically the b20 the parts are the most affordable the engine's the most available and in this configuration, it can handle the most power. It maxes out around 500 to 550. The H series isn't too far behind. It maxes out around 400 to 450, but it isn't as readily available. But I'm gonna leave that decision up to you. And if you've enjoyed this video, why don't you go ahead and watch this one? And if you've made it to the end of this video, I appreciate you, brother. Until the next one.